The Iowa caucus is coming down to the wire last night with Mitt Romney edging out Rick Santorum for first place by eight votes. But another major story that hasn't gone unnoticed is the strong third place showing by Texas Congressman Ron Paul. And joining us now this morning with his take on how he did last night is Texas Congressman and Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul. Good morning to you, Congressman. Good morning. Nice to be with you. I saw that you were in a very upbeat mood during your speech last night with your son and family standing behind you. Uh, people predicted that you would right. be in the top three and you ended up being third. Are you disappointed you weren't first or second? Of course, everybody likes to get, you know, come out on top, but I don't think we can be real disappointed. Uh, certainly uh, with that crowd and the enthusiasm of the supporters and the volunteers uh, and how, mu how much enthusiasm is with, the, with all those young people. So, no, I can't be disappointed with that. But it also means that uh, we have a lot of work to do and we have to continue to build. And, but I, I thought the results were very good. Uh, we did very well with independent voters, and everybody knew we would do very well with people who were between 18 and 30. So that came through. But the other thing I thought was very interesting is it is... Uh, true that when you look at my votes, about half of them were considered very conservative, but the other half were considered moderate. And I think my positions that I hold for limited government mm -hmm. across the board is very attractive across the board. In New Hampshire, you know, there are a lot of independents. There are more registered mm -hmm. independents than there are Republicans or Democrats. So we're looking forward to New Hampshire. I know you went heavily after Newt Gingrich, as did Mitt Romney, and Newt Gingrich is, uh, said some nice things about you, but he has some bad things to say about your foreign policy. Let's listen. We also have to understand, and this will be a major debate with Congressman Paul, who's had a very good night, and I congratulate him on having done very well. But the fact is, his views on foreign policy, I think, are stunningly dangerous for the survival of the United States. And your reaction? <laughs> <laughs> well, he should read the Constitution to find out what we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be the policemen of the world. We're not supposed to start preemptive war and go in and occupy countries. Why don't we look to George Bush's advice? He ran in 2001 by saying we should have a humble foreign policy. We shouldn't be the policemen of the world. We shouldn't be in nation right. building. So he's taken on George Bush. He's taken on the founders of this country. He's taken on Robert Taft. He's taken on President Eisenhower, who warned us about bankrupting this country and and. Uh, Kowtowing to the military industrial complex but, but while undermining our national what, defense. What other foreign policy expert agrees with you? The American people and their experts, they have to pay for it and they have to die for it. And 75% of the American people are saying, come home, come home. Mm -hmm. The soldiers, just think of the soldiers. I mean, why don't they have an opinion? They have to risk their lives. And they give me more money than the rest, twice as much as all the other candidates. Why, why is that ignored? Don't they have a say? Shouldn't they be able to reverse, an, uh, you know, uh, right. uh, give us an opinion? Mm -hmm. So people, if you ignore that, uh, you do right. it at risk because this is endless and our country's bankrupt so we can't afford okay. it we didn't beat the soviets with the nuclear war we beat the soviets because they were ruined economically and that's what we're on the verge of doing to ourselves speaking of risk uh, governor former governor sarah palin last night had some words about you she said that the republicans better not marginalize ron paul and his supporters because their physical concerns are very legitimate and the republicans better work with them your reaction to that well, she's a very wise woman. Uh, I would say that uh, my proposal, if you look carefully and give me my due, I'm the only one that proposed any real cuts because most people who have paid any attention to our budgetary debate, uh, they're just talking about cut, token cuts on increased spending. And I'm talking about real cuts. I'm the only one that proposed a trillion dollars cut in one year. So if you're a fiscal conservative, how can you blow that off? And, and she's right. She's giving an honest opinion. That is the big issue, the debt is the big issue right now and it's not just welfare spending here at home it's across the board it increase it also includes all the spending overseas that mm -hmm. people are sick and tired of that's the easiest place to cut overseas spending and take care of the people right. who have become dependent on the government here at home do you think uh, governor rick perry and michelle bachman should drop out no, I, I don't think I should tell anybody what they should do. <laughs> I think they should do what they want to do. All right. <laughs> I well, mean, that, that's generally the way. That's generally the way we do things. But uh, yeah. no, I think uh, I think they they all have to make their own decision. Well, congratulations. Three tickets out of Iowa. The conventional wisdom, and you were in the top three. Congratulations, Ron Paul, for joining us live today from Iowa. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Right. Thank you. Good luck.